In 1958, behind the brick walls of a quiet lab in upstate New York, a machine blinked to life. It didn't follow rules. It wasn't programmed to obey. It learned from its mistakes, from data, from experience. He called it the perceptron, an artificial neuron built from wires, wheels, and vision. Imagine this, a machine that doesn't just follow rules, but actually learns from mistakes, adapts over time, thinks in its own way, like us. That idea changed everything, and it all started with one man, Frank Rosenblatt. Welcome back to AI Virtus. I am Majdi Jazmawi, a computer engineer, exploring how AI came to be what it is today. In this episode, we will look at the birth of machine learning, how Rosenblatt's perceptron shook the AI world, why it stalled for years, and how it came roaring back to shape the technology we use every day. Let's rewind. Before AI, we had rule-based systems, basically computers that followed strict step-by-step -step instructions. You would tell them exactly what to do, and they would do it, but only that. If something changed, they would fail. No learning, no adapting. For example, the expert systems used logic trees, diagnose diseases, or play chess but they couldn't handle anything outside what they were programmed for. That limitation sparked a question. What if machines could learn on their own? Frank Rosenblatt had an answer. It was called the perceptron. A simple idea, here's how it works. You give it inputs like pixels from an image. Each input gets a weight. The perceptron adds them up. If the total crosses a certain threshold, it spites out a one. If not, it spites out a zero. That's it. But here's the genius. If it makes a wrong guess, it adjusts the weights. It learns from its mistakes. Over time, it gets better, smarter. Like a kid learning to read letters. Rosenblatt even built a physical version in 1960, the Mark I Perceptron. Rotating wheels, lights, analog circuits. It could learn to recognize shapes and patterns just by seeing examples. For a while, the hype was real. People thought we were on the verge of true machine intelligence, but not everyone was convinced. In 1969, Mervyn Minsky and Seymour Papert dropped a pump shell. Their book, Perceptrons, proved that single layer perceptrons had limits, big ones like this. It couldn't solve the XOR problem, a basic logic task involving in overlapping data. Their conclusion, without multiple layers, neural networks couldn't handle complex problems that criticism hit hard. Funding dried up, Interest faded for nearly two decades, neural networks went quiet. Fast forward to the 1980s, researchers like Jeffrey Hinton had an idea. Backpropagation. It fixed the perceptron's biggest weaknesses. Now, instead of just one layer, you could have many layers. When the network made an error, backpropagation sent the error backward, updating weights layer by layer. That changed everything. Suddenly, Neural networks could handle complex problems, speech recognition, image classification, even early language translation. Why now? Because computing power finally catch up and we had enough data to train these systems properly. From perceptron to deep learning. Today, the perceptron's legacy is everywhere. Your phone's face unlock, deep learning, voice assistance, self-driving cars, yep, all built on multi-layer neural networks. And it all traces back Rosenblatt's early work. He planted the seed. Minsky and Babbert forced the field to grow up. Hinton, Pingyu, and others took it to the next level. This is the journey of AI, from rules to learning to intelligence. That's the story of the Perceptron, an idea that was ahead of its time, paused by its limits, then reborn with even more power. Thanks for watching. I am Majdi Jazmawi, and this is AI Virtus. If you enjoyed this dive into AI history, hit like, share it with a friend, and don't forget to subscribe. Next time, we'll go deeper into the science behind today's smart machines. See you then.